In this lesson, we'll be learning how to bring in an external video so that it can play back inside of Adobe Animate file. And we'll also learn how to put a set of controls onto it. What's very important about playing external video files in Animate is to realize that they are external files, so they will not get embedded. Therefore, they need to be included with the Animate file anywhere that file goes to play back the videos. Now, what I suggest is you create something like a root folder, put all your videos inside of that folder, and then very importantly, create and save your file immediately into that folder even before you import the videos. And I'll explain why uh, when we do the importing. It does have to do with pathways. So I'm just going to create a new file right now. I already have a folder that I will save this into with my videos. So I'll start by going new. And we'll just save it as a standard sized FLA file. Now, as I said, immediately save this into the same folder as your videos. So I'm just going to do save as. And I do have a folder called video assets. So I'm just going to call this video assignment. Uh, you should actually, you know what? I'll call it last name underscore assignment number. Now I'm guessing here, I think this might be 10 or 11 A. But whatever the number is, just put underscore lesson number at the end. All right, and save that. Now the reason I had you create and save the file immediately is because we're going to be dealing with an external file. And as you probably know from other web assignments we've done, we have to deal with a pathway. So by having your files in the same folder as your host file here, the pathway is simply the name of the file. So before I begin importing the video, I'm just going to change my background color. It's uh, my OCD kicking in here, I think. All right, so let me start the process of importing a video. Again, this goes on the assumption that your videos are already in the same folder as this file. Now, let me just go out to my desktop and establish that. And here we are. There's my file. And I have a lot more, but these are my videos right here. Okay. So we start by going File, Import. Import Video. And you'll get a dialog box up here. Now, if your file is already properly formatted, it's very straightforward. I'd say leave the default load external video. Leave that alone. Simply browse for your file. So I'm already in the folder here, so I'm just going to pick DGO 2018. Let me just scroll down. I'll use this one here. It's an MP4. It's an older file, but it's properly formatted. DGO animate underscore 2018 is when I formatted that, and I will use that. I just simply have to click Next. And when I'm on the next window, we have this thing called skinning. The skin is the controls, if you will. There's one that sits over the video, and there's one that sits under, and there are a number of combinations of different controls that you can attach. And there's a long list here. So I'm just going to say, uh, maybe I'll try skin under, where is it here? Skin under, and I'll just pick the one that seems to have the most choices. Okay, and then I click Next. Then I click Finish. And you should see a little window appear here. I'm going to select that right now. I could do a test movie. Why don't I do that first? And let's just see what we get before we start changing parameters. So I'm just going to go Test Movie. And there we have the video playing. And this is what we call the skin. It's the controls underneath. And there are various combinations of features that you can include. So I'm just going to close that right now. And let me show you how you can edit this and gain further control. So you do click on it. It's known as a component, a video component. And what we do now is we go over to properties. And we have this nice little icon here called show parameters. And it's got a list of features, parameters, 
that can control this video. The autoplay means it will start playing immediately. So let me actually turn that off so that I need to click play as a user if I want to watch this. We have a lot of different choices here, but I'll just go to the two main ones. One is the skin. If you don't like the controls that you had, you can revisit them with this edit button and just choose from the other choices. Let's see, skin under play or skin under all. That will be anything that's possible that can go in there. I'll click OK. The other thing which is very critical that I want to point out to you is the source. Even if you did save your file before you started, which is what you should have done, go in here and double check that your pathway is simply the file name. If you see C semicolon slash slash whatever, it's not the right pathway. We need to have this relative pathway. So you can manually edit it if you can just go and delete the rest if it happens to be there. Okay, but you want to make sure that this is the pathway and it's simply the file name due to the fact that it's in the same folder. And you can actually go and reset that or actually choose a whole new video as well. And by the way, it will retain all of the properties that we had set. So if I want to change my video, I can go down to DJO, let's see, Dentine Animate 2018. So I've switched out the video for a different video. So let's just close this for a second and we'll just hit play movie. That window seemed to want to open again. Test. Okay, so this time it doesn't automatically play because remember we turned off autoplay. And you see that it's actually a different video here. So I'll hit play. And we have all the controls. I can turn the volume down. I can scrub through the video. I can mute it. I could go full screen, but it won't work here. It only works when it's actually on the web. And I have pause and play buttons and so on. But this is the skin and it's sitting underneath and it does have all the potential features that one could put inside of Animate. So that's the main way that you would bring a video in. I'm going to show you what happens if your video is not properly formatted for Animate. So I think I'm actually going to delete this off the screen and we'll sort of start again here. I'll go import, import video and assuming we're going to get a video that is not currently compatible, we'll browse for it to start with. I'll pick one of my .mov videos. Okay, DJO 2018. Well, let's try a different one. Nutri-Green. Actually, bear with me for a second here. Nutri-Green 160.mov. Very old. Look at that, 2006. Wow. Open. Okay. So, there was a notice saying it doesn't seem to be compatible. I just skipped past it. So we have this nice little convert video button. What that actually does, as you can see in the pop-up there, is it will la launch Adobe, <laughs> sorry, Adobe Media Encoder. And it's through the Media Encoder that you can convert any file. It's actually a very powerful tool. So let me click on there. And what it does is I'm not going to really show you Media Encoder, but it's going to bring you to the window called Q where it already put the video in and by default it's going to save it as a .mp4. It will save it to the same output folder by default as well but if you wanted to change it you could click on that button and change the location. You can actually change the presets as well but I'm going to say just leave it at its default H.264 match source and retain the output file location. Once you're sure of all of that, you just hit the play button and it will reprocess it. So it's going to take that .mov file and convert it to a mp4. Now, depending on the size of the movie will depend how long this takes. These are very small and you can see it processing right now. And that's it. Let me go out to my finder and make sure that file is there. And I'm going date modified at the top. There is the newly created file. All right, so now we just have to go back to animate. And it's basically telling me here, once you've processed it, go back and browse for it. So let's go back and browse for it. 
and there it is right there. And we bring that in. And we click Next. Same thing. I'm going to leave Skin under All. That's a good one. Click Next. Click Finish. And that's how we do it if the video is not compatible on our first try when we try to bring it into Animate. So let me go to the parameters here and just turn off autoplay. You can see how small it is. It's a very old, small file. And I definitely want to save this file as well. There we go. And I'll do a test movie. Okay, there it is. Now, if it's too small, the skin can only go so small. The skin will actually get larger. And maybe I'll quickly show you that after we try this. Anyhow, there is the video playing after we had processed it, processed it through the media encoder. So one thing I didn't show you is you can resize these on the stage. If I go over to my free transform tool, start to resize this with the shift key down. Let's make it much bigger here. And I'll just drag it up higher. And we'll just do a quick save. I'll run that through one more time through the play. Just to demonstrate that the skin underneath actually will resize when it's larger than that minimum size, as you can see there. Okay, and if I hit play, there we go. Turn my volume down. Obviously, if it's a low res movie, you're not going to get much quality. And that's, you know, that's the normal thing when you start stretching things too big, if you will. Regardless, it's doable. So now you know how to process a video, whether it's compatible or not with Adobe Animate. So I want you to go to the next video to actually accomplish the completed exercise associated with videos for today. But this is how you import them with the two scenarios, whether it's compatible or non-compatible. And again, I'm just gonna hit Command S on my keyboard, Control S on the PC. And that's your video tutorial for today.